How to add and delete games to your retro Pi system. Like a mouse. Like a mouse. This is a tutorial on how to set up Wi-Fi or Ethernet on a Raspberry Pi computer. I'll show you my favorite way to transfer game ROMs to RetroPy, then how to configure inputs and change screen resolutions. Some games like Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and Dig Dug are displayed in portrait mode. I figured it would be nice to have this information in one video, and we'll note timestamps of each steps in the comments. Before I get into it, I want to show you this custom setup. This is a brand new control panel from Boss Robot Games, and is made to the dimensions of the original Konami 4-player cabinet. It can be purchased fully assembled like the one you see here, in a kit, or just the control panel top. It can be adapted to fit an original arcade cabinet, or the Boss Robot Games Reproduction 4-player cabinet. The only real difference between the two is the angle that's cut at the top of the control panel. Inside you'll see I have a Raspberry Pi mini computer, an iPack 2 keyboard encoder, and to handle the extra buttons I had to get a Chinese style keyboard encoder too. For this tutorial, you'll need to hook up a keyboard to your Raspberry Pi and have a controller. I like to use this Super Nintendo controller because the color scheme matches the Simpsons pretty well. One thing you'll notice is that it has four coin door buttons on the front and a six player setup, which is what the customer requested. With this you can play four player games like NBA Jam, your beat em up games, or you can play games that are like Hadouken! Get over here! Finish him! Hadouken! Tiger! 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 Uppercut! Possibly even cook. The panel is made to hook to a TV with an HDMI cable. So once you have your keyboard set up with your video game controller, we can move on to the next step. The first thing you'll need to do is configure your controller. If you were to plug the controller in, the first screen that would come up would say, press any button to continue. If your controller isn't working, you can get into that menu by pushing the start button, and then configure input. I'm going to select A to select that, and yes, I'm sure I'd like to configure input. And so I'll hold down the button. And then you just go through here and select the correct buttons. And then the important part is, is when it says at the very bottom to select a hotkey, make sure you press the select button. Hotkey enable, press the select button. Now your gamepad is configured. The next step is either to plug in an Ethernet cable or connect your Wi-Fi to the Raspberry Pi. You do that by going to the RetroPie menu. If you have an Ethernet cable connected, to see your IP address, simply go to the Show IP selection in the RetroPie menu. Otherwise, go to Wi-Fi to set up your home Wi-Fi network. And simply run through this screen here. It says Connect to Wi-Fi Network, and you'll type in your password. As you can see there, I'm already connected and I have an IP address. At this point, you want to write down that IP address because it's necessary for the next step. You can exit out of this screen by pushing over and then selecting the exit button. Now that you have your IP address written down, go to a PC that is connected on the same network as your Raspberry Pi. So here I am in my PC. I want to show you a couple of important websites and I'll have them linked below. The first one is where you get the ROMs. I like to go to archive.org and either select MAME 2003 Plus or MAME 2003 and I like to get the full non-merged ROM sets. This website here explains what the non-merged ROM set means is that it has all the files it needs for each ROM to run on its own. You don't need the parent files. If you don't know what that means it doesn't matter. I guess the important part is, is that each one of these is a standalone file. You don't need anything else for it to run. So if you navigate over here to show all and then ROMs, with this screen you can individually download your ROMs one at a time. And I find that kind of useful because if you have too many on your system it's a bit difficult to navigate. Second website I want to show is where you figure out 
what the file name is and what the compatibility is. So in our case, I like to run MAME 2003, and that would require MAME 0.78 ROMs, or LR MAME 2003 Plus, which has a wider range of ROMs to choose from. What is really useful about this site is I could go down to the MAME 2003 section and click on the LR MAME 2003 compatibility list, which will pull up this spreadsheet right here. And you can see the spreadsheet has the name of the game versus what it is. Like for instance, 1943J is 1943 Battle of Midway Japan version. And you can hit Control F to search for a ROM. And you can see there's 99 listed under Street Fighter. So for instance, if I want to play Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter and I want to have the US version, I'm going to type this in on archive.org. And here it is. So I'll click that file, save the file, and I'll open the download. Now that we have the file downloaded, let's transfer it onto the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go into Fly File Explorer, and then I'm going to type in my address for the Raspberry Pi, forward slash forward slash 192.168.11. So here we are into the Raspberry Pi now. And if I go into ROMs, and either I'm going to put this in the MAME Libitro or the Arcade folder. In my case, I'm going to put it in the MAME Libitro folder. So to transfer the ROM, it's very simple. You just drag and drop, and it copies it over there. And it's as simple as that. And then we're going to go over to the Pi. So if I get out of this menu by pushing B or the over button, I can go to my MAME and you can see, hey, where's that ROM you just dumped in there? Well, you'll have to either restart the system by pushing start, navigating down to quit, A, and then I like to restart emulation station. Really restart. Ready, So now you can see, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter Zero is in there. And the reason that I put this into the name of the Vitro folder versus the arcade folder is because I already have all the videos downloaded for all these ROMs. And you can see that playing in the corner. So to get into the ROM, you can push the A button. And as you'll notice, this screen comes up. I'm going to push a button just so you can see what it does. This screen is where you can select your resolutions, your default emulator for the ROM, your default emulator for each game. And so you can see that each one of these ROMs is playing under LR MAME 2003. Now, I'm going to exit without launching because typically you won't want this screen to come up, only when you're doing a debug or trying to figure out why your ROM's not working. Ready. So to get rid of that screen, I'm going to navigate back into the RetroPie menu, Bank Command Configuration, and then you see the launch menu currently enabled. I'm going to disable that. Push over and exit. Now when I go back into my main, Ready. Ready. Fight. see my Street Fighter 2 is there. And now that naggy launch screen is not going to happen. So it works. I'm going to exit out of the game by pushing the start and select button at the same time. Now I'm going to show you how to configure your key inputs for a specific game. Let's navigate into a game. Once you're in a game, you'll select the main menu by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. 
and you can do one of two things. You can do input general, that will be for every single game on your system, or you go into input this game. In my case, since I'm playing Street Fighter 2, I'm going to make these the player 1 and player 2, where normally this would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I select input this game, and you can see some of the keys are already filled out, like the coin 1 and coin 2 from previous. But what I want to do is I want to change the player 1 buttons and the player 2 buttons. So here's how you do that. Simply just select with enter, and then you enter in whatever key. Select enter and then left. In this case, buttons 2, 3, and 5 are on top, and then if you scroll down in the menu, buttons 1, 3, and 6 are on the bottom. I also like to make the player 1 start be all the buttons and the player 2 start be all these buttons. And so you can see I can enter multiple buttons for the same thing. To get out of the menu I press escape. Now if I coin up, All my buttons for player one should be configured here. And you can see the fast low punch is here, the medium is here, the high is here. For player two, let's coin up. Correct buttons. Now what I want to get into a little bit is what you can do with this setup. One thing is good is if you press the select button, which is the hotkey, you can scroll through some save states. So you see at the very bottom of the screen there's a little thing that says save slot 1. Select and the upper left button will load it and select in the upper right button will save it. You can't really tell at this point, but I'll change it a little bit. So if I wanted to save that, because I thought that was just great, I press select and right. And now, if I decided to load it again, select and left. And you have multiple save states. I believe you got 10 of them. The next thing I want to do is show you how to change aspect ratio. Some of the games come in portrait mode and some of them come in landscape mode. In the case of this game, 1943, it's typically in portrait mode. And so I want to show you how to change the resolution. The first thing we need to do is go into the game. To get into the retro arch menu, press the select button plus X. The B button will back you out of the menu and the A button will select it for you. And so I want to navigate with the B button so I'm at the main menu and go down to settings by pressing A and then video. And you can see my aspect ratio is set to custom and it's a little bit wide. I typed in aspect ratio calculator on the internet and it said the aspect ratio for 1080 height should be 820. So this is the correct aspect ratio for the game. And if you want to save this setting, you'll navigate out by pressing B, go to the quick menu. At the very bottom, there's overrides, and there's two choices. You can save the core overrides, which means that every one of your games on your system will have this aspect ratio and position. And you can go to save game overrides. I'm going to go to save game overrides.
you can see in the lower left hand corner it says override saved successfully. Now you can do one of two things. At this point you can exit out of the game by going to quit retroarch. Or you could have pressed select X again. So let's go back into the game to show you that those settings had been saved. Again, I'm going into the RetroArch menu by pressing select and X. I'm going to press B to back out to the main menu. Go to settings, video, and you can see my aspect ratio was saved at 820 by 1080. You can also change the Y and X position to match your screen. And that's it. That's how you would change your aspect ratio on your games. Thank you for watching my video. Ow!